I first got into playing hockey when I was about um, seven years old. Uh, my uncle and my parents got me into, into the game uh, when Cardiff first uh, started playing out of the old rink in, in town. Um, so I used to come down and watch the games, go on the ice after for the, the aftermatch skate, and then it just progressed from there through the juniors and then so on and so forth. I think any time that you get to play hockey for a living or something that you're passionate about, you always hear people say that you want to love what you do. So the ability to play hockey, which is something that obviously I grew up loving, um, I feel very privileged to play. Um, to be a Cardiff Devils player, Cardiff's a great town um, and we've got great fans. So to play in front of these fans, to play in Cardiff is an absolute blast and I feel very, very privileged would be the word and I respect the fact that uh, the history of this organization, so I'm very thankful for the opportunity. It's actually be a privilege to be a Cardiff Devils player. Um, not many people um, get to experience that. Um, obviously, whatever attracted me to come to Cardiff was uh, I moved to, um, decided to move to Europe, and Cardiff was one of the best places that I researched in terms of clubs in the UK, so it was a no-brainer for me. Yeah, ice hockey is not quite as big um, in the UK as sports such as football and rugby, but what you do get with the fans, uh, particularly the Devils fans, is a lot of passion, a lot of energy, so that really makes for a great atmosphere at ice hockey games. Um, my role essentially is not only to announce uh, statistical information at the game, but it's also to play relevant music along with Dai to get the crowd pumped up, enjoying their evening and really getting behind the Devils and supporting the team and hopefully pushing them on to getting a victory during the evening. There's been an issue with um, TV coverage in this country. The, uh, we did have Sky were giving a bit of coverage to the league over previous seasons, but unfortunately it didn't really seem to be a priority in their eyes and it was always kept on one of their smaller channels, one of the side channels like Sky Sports Extra, but um, thankfully that does seem to be improving now with Premier Sports coming on board and they're going to be showing a live game um, every Saturday night, which obviously is vital really for the survival of um, hockey in this country. It's a shame because it's a massively supported indoor sport, in fact it's the most in, uh, supported indoor sport in the country, and in certain parts of the country, like Scotland for instance, on some weekends there's more people uh, watching hockey matches than there is watching the whole of the Scottish Second Division football. Um, we need as much exposure as we can get. Um, we're recently, um, we've just moved live on to uh, Premier Sports TV, uh, which is now playing a live game every week. Uh, we were on last night against uh, Brayhead. So that, that's great publicity. That gets the, op the opportunity then for people outside of ice hockey to actually, uh, to actually see a game live on TV. But I think one of the problems is it's, it's a live sport. It's something that you need to get down and see visually. Um, you know, you've, you feel the impacts, you see the speed. More often than not, there's quite often a bit of argy-bargy going on as well, which is, which is always nice to see for the fans. So um, definitely I think uh, you know, popularity can, can be increased by just as much exposure as we can get. And the, the you know, ice hockey is increasing. As far as um, Devils TV goes, which is uh, what I work on, we do uh, webcasting and um, replays for, on match nights. With our webcasting, we broadcast from the tent um, straight to people at home on whatever peripheral they're watching, whether that's their computer or their tablet, etc. And that enables them to watch the game in fairly decent definition um, and they get full commentary on that as well with two commentators and then inside the building we're able to um, cut replays from the main feed and show them on the screens that are around so that everybody can see the, the, the action and we can normally generate those within about a minute and a half of the action taking place. Will the new rink help to increase popularity? Well it will certainly help to increase and draw new fans in. I mean as you've seen for many new stadia around Wales um, quite often the, the increase in, um, uh, in, in, uh, in people visiting the new facility uh, is pretty intense. I mean, generally, uh, you do tend to find that a new facility will draw new people in, mainly because they all want to go to the new facility. And generally, people are quite fickle as well in terms of the quality, and we, are in a, we have quite a poor facility here, as it's a temporary one in the Cardiff Bay. So for us, you know, we've been waiting in this new facility for now about seven, eight years. Um, and I think once it arrives, I think we'll be, we'll be bringing a lot of old fans back that used to come from the old rink. I think the popularity of the game has changed in Cardiff um, over the years. I mean, at one stage when it first started, they were sell out crowds every, every night. Um, then it tailed off, then it got a bit more interested again. Um, and I think right now, with the facility being how it is, um, it makes it a bit more difficult to get 
you know, the fans in every, every night because it's a freezing cold building. But I'm sure when a new facility comes, it's going to be a packed house again. Devils Community Foundation is being run by Jamie Elster now, who took over from Brent Pope, who was doing it for a few years. Um, they have got a junior development program where they go out to schools, where they promote ice hockey uh, for the little youngsters to tr come and try and experience it. As I say, we on the Wednesdays, we have a learn to play for youngsters. Uh, this year we've had a few players join the club from the tens upwards. We usually try and promote the sport by, um, for example, uh, at uh, Devils games in period of breaks to try, uh, you know, put some uh, lower junior um, groups out like the 12s, 14s, 16s to try and promote the sports to try and get uh, youngsters introduced into it. I think we also now have a like a roller hockey ball program over in Kogan Leisure Centre where we're trying to get youngsters to try and come and experience, you know, using a kit and using a ball rather than the puck. And if they like that, they can come over to the rink um, on a on a training night to try and experience ice hockey on the ice for themselves. We do a lot of charity and community work as well. Um, we have a couple of things coming up around Christmas. Um, so anything, any people have ideas, they can definitely bring it to the table. And Carter Devils organization will sort it out, send a couple of players, maybe some you know events. We do heavily involved in that as well. I'm a part of a group or a charity called HP4K, Hockey Players for Kids. Um, as a hockey player, you only have a short window or platform um, to talk to youth or to make a difference. And we're in a position where we can make a difference. And not that you can't when you're not, when you're not playing, but as a professional hockey player, you can spend time with people, you can mentor people, or you're viewed as a leader in the community. So if you can use that for the betterment of others, I think, I truly think it's someone's responsibility. So Charles Barkley once said, I'm, I'm not, a, not a role member in the community, or uh, uh, a, a role model in the community. I would disagree. I think in the position that we're in, um, any time that you can help out, uh, you should. And so for that end, um, I also think that a lot of hockey players do. You'll find that they'll bend over backwards. It gen generally tends to be a very committed group uh, of professionals. And case in point, uh, our team, guys will bend over backwards for anybody. So I think that would evidence that point. The financial side of ice hockey is like any professional sport. It's very, very difficult. Um, you're continuously um, pushing the barriers. I mean, one of the differences between a professional sports club and running a business is that generally um, when you're running a business, you're looking at staff costs to be around 30 to 40 percent. Um, but in ice hockey and, and in many professional sports, it can often be 70 or 80 percent of your revenue. The reason being is if the team's doing well, um, that draws the crowds in, that increases revenue streams, and therefore you can sort of, you, you end up performing better. Um, if you don't spend as much money on the team as you should do, then quite often what can happen is you'll actually find that um, you're not drawing the crowds in, the revenue spend isn't where it is. Where it becomes difficult is when you really do push the boundaries in terms of your cost and then the team doesn't play well. Um, and uh, that's what it's been like at the start of this season. It's our most expensive team in 10 years. Um, but the start of this season has been, uh, uh, shall we say, a bit of a challenge. Um, but it's nice to see we're starting to get things going now. And, and uh, I think um, you know, that, that should help us achieve uh, at least push on for a break-even status, which is the best we can hope for in, um, in you know, in this, this this particular sport. Yeah, I mean the fans who come to watch week in week out are you know dedicated. There's a lot of fans that go on the road and uh, follow the team wherever wherever there's a game, even if it's uh, flying to Belfast or up to Scotland. So, you know they, they they love their hockey in Cardiff, and the ones that do come every week, um, you know, will travel. Uh, you know, far and wide to see a hockey game. The UK um, is embracing hockey. Some of the communities are have big followings. But that being said, hockey is everything in Canada. It's it would be like football here. Um, huge following. So uh, tough comparison, but a bit of a difference. But that being said, there's great fans in the UK, and they're very passionate.
like to talk about Ben Davies. Uh, he's a guy who I grew up admiring when I was six years old. Uh, he came to my school and talked to us about uh, eating habits. And he's a guy who lives his life the right day. He's always the first guy in the shower, last guy out. And uh, anyways, um, I think can't say enough. Can't say enough about him. And uh, you know, he's the kind, he's the kind of guy you want to marry your sister. Uh, just that he's too shy to go talk to her. So, anyways, that's about it. And uh, thank you.